how much money do we print the last 24 months? What's the dollar amount? No idea. Over $5 trillion. Over $5 trillion, more than 40% of all the money in the history of America has been printed in the last 24 months. Okay? Now, they take that money, and they send, what do you call it, all this money they send stimulus to people. Checks. Stimulus checks. to people. The people that are getting the money with stimulus checks, what do you think they're doing with their money? Well, for one thing, it brought a lot of kids out of poverty. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. Look at the statistics. You, then, then the statistics would have gone up. But what do you think they do with that money? What do you think they do with that money? You tell me. Well, you, you tell me what they do with that money. If, I'm not if one I'm, of them. I if, I'm, if I'm accustomed to spending money and I'm spending the money buying stuff, I buy more stuff. And when you buy more stuff, who's running those companies that sell more stuff? The so, people at the top. So the money always flows to the top. So essentially... The politicians that you want to increase the taxes for, they're the reason why billionaires increased their net worth 70% the last two years. Well, yeah. There's a couple different things yeah. going on. It's not a blanket statement. So, and, and this is what I want to get to the heart of it because the facts support that, yes, people have spent a lot more money, but they've also, more people have gotten out of debt. This is what happens when you print $5 trillion. There's, there's options. People have saved a lot more. People have... Um, because with unemployment and stimulus checks, they've had a lot more in their bank accounts. They've they paid off debt. I think this is the first time in decades that um, debt, basically personal debt, decreased uh, since the pandemic. So th it's not just a blanket but, statement but here. But go with, I'm sorry. I'm but, sorry, Adam. You can't say something like that. No, no, you can't say something like that. Okay, so go to where you just went. I'm just saying that there's. But, it's but, not everyone spent all their money. Some people saved. Some people got out of debt. But this is what happens when you let's, print five let's, trillion. Let's talk about that, guys. Like you realize, if I give you, if I have a hundred dollars right now, I give it to you. Did that hundred dollars disappear? No. But the, at the but end wait, of the day, me, the money just, flowed to the top. The, but the, let me let me go a little bit yeah. further. If I give you a hundred dollars, did that money disappear? No, it did not. The money just transferred to who? To you. Mm -hmm. If you give that hundred dollars to him. Did the money disappear? Mm -hmm. No, it just went to him. If the money goes from him to him, did that money disappear? That hundred dollars still out there, right? It's just not in my hand, not in your hand, not in his hand. It's now in his hands, right? Okay, fine. That five trillion dollars that we put in the economy, where does that five trillion dollars go to? So, oh my God, I paid so many people's credit card then in college debt. Really? Where did that five trillion go to? Pat, Pat, I'm, but where did that five? I'm asking. It's gone him. everywhere. It's gone all of it. Circulated all over the economy. A lot of it. A lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it went to the stock market. And that goes to basically where Elon no, Musk. It's, it's bigger than that, guys. It's bigger than that. This guy is sitting here, just gave this a st strategy on how to ruin a nation. Who gives a shit where that $5 trillion went to? Here's what a $5 trillion 100% <laughs> went our, to. To our debt. To our debt. Yeah. That $5 trillion is debt. Like That's we're, on one side of the balance we, sheet. Do you realize side, who's yes. the speaker today? Our guest today is John Perkins, economic hitman, mm -hmm. where the business philosophy is what? We can kill him with the sword or debt. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, but we paid off college debt. Oh, but we paid off credit card. Oh, but we bought more Bitcoin. Oh, but we bought more NFTs. Oh, but we... No. Bullshit. The country you love is officially enslaved to others. And what do we have to do with this money? They have to get that money from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So do we print some more money to make, oh, let's help the poor even more. This is not the strategy. I'd love nothing more. This is a 99 cent store guy. I'm a guy, my parents got a divorce. I didn't have any money when we grew up. I'm a guy that went to the military, was going to do military for 40 years. If a guy didn't sit there and say, hey, you need to kind of figure out how money works. Where the hell am I today? I'm just another guy that's sitting there saying, can you please send us more stimulus checks? This is not the right strategy. We want the same mission to help middle incomes, uh, uh, median income to go higher, but the way to do it isn't to send more money to people. That is not the strategy, because that keeps hurting, that keeps validating your business model. When you went and sat down with people like, you know, the Guatemala guy, Jacopo Guzman, when you sat down with Ecuador Aguilera, Jaime Aguilera, when you went and sat down with Panama, Omar Torrijos, when you went and sat down with, you know, Venezuela, when you, all this stuff, it just validates the formula so, works. So what, what are you saying? That it's, it's good to have a country where three individuals have as much wealth as half the population. I'd call that an oligarchy. What would you call it? I, I'd really like to know. What, I, what, I what would do you, say. You, you, is that a democracy? I, do you like sports? Some. What do you, which sport do you like? Soccer. Soccer? Mm -hmm. okay. Hockey. You like hockey? Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite hockey player? I haven't been following this year, actually. Who's the greatest hockey player of all time? Gretzky. Is it fair that he scored more assists and goals than anybody else by a mile? That's a shame, John. I'm appalled. 
that we allow somebody to beat number two by so much with goals and assists. He should have never beat the greatest hockey player prior to him by so much. That is embarrassing. We should limit how much he should have beat second place because we should give more minutes to the other guy because, God forbid, Wayne Gretzky, why are you getting so many minutes? We shouldn't let him play so much. We shouldn't have these success so, stories. So, so, Let's so, so, keep people less. Let's only beat the record by one goal, not 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 six hundred goals. Pat, so you're saying John. you're saying that the American economy is a sports game. Yes, it is. You're playing a game. Capitalism is a game. So is socialism. The difference and, is and, capitalism. And, 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 and the difference is capitalism. You control the game based on what you so do. So you think what the, you think what the United States has today is capitalism. With a touch of social, uh, with a touch of social programs. I to, it, what we have is predatory capitalism or oligarchic capitalism. I, there's a. There's, it is not true capitalism. There is because true capitalism. Yeah. True capitalism, you know, the definition of capitalism is that the means of production, manufacturing, and commerce are not owned by the government. They're yeah. owned by individuals. You're going to lose this argument when you go. Keep going. Yeah, we'll see about that. Actually, go for it. I'm enjoying this. Go ahead. <laughs> I am too. Yeah. I am too. Never did I think I'd have an argument like this with an Iranian. I mean, but, but anyway, this but, is but, why but, I invite you back because I enjoy our conversations. <laughs> so let me continue. So, so in, in our form of capitalism, yeah. uh, the, indi- the, the, go- the government does not own individual enterprises, okay. but the individual enterprise owners own the government. So when you go and you talk about our politicians and what they're, what they're doing and so forth, that's because they're owned by the oligarchy. That's because they're owned by so the billionaires. So who's the problem? So who's the problem? The system's the problem. The fact, the, I, okay, the, I agree. The, the, fact, the fact that corporations and the corporation owners can uh-huh, put so much money uh-huh. into well, this politics. This is what they call crony capitalism. So, yeah. so, so, so guess what? what they call oligarchy. So guess what? So guess what? So then, so then this goes to <laughs> one thing. So you think uh, we should have lobbyists? Not you on the level. Lobbyists are not, good. Right now, we have 300 lobbyists to every member of Congress. You think that's a good thing? No. You think we should have lobbyists? Period. I think you, I think you can have middlemen, but it's not not lobbyists that are that are so totally self oriented. How many people do you see senators and congressmen retire and become lobbyists, making six million a year? A lot. Okay, so what do you think happens there? What, why do we have that's, that? That's part of the bribery. That's part of the corruption well, of the we, system. We shouldn't have that. I agree. Okay, then. So we have one area that we agree with. We agree that the reason why these billionaires can get away with that is because they have lobbyists that they're paying money. And these senators and congressmen, if you got a half a million dollars to stay quiet in 1980, what the hell do you think they're getting behind closed doors? (laughs) Okay? If you got a half a million dollars to stay quiet in 1980, what do you think these senators and congressmen are getting wallets in? Here's $800,000. Do me a favor. Can you make sure you hurt the other small business owner so I can whoop I've, his ass? I've actually heard that a, that a congressman can be bought for ten thousand dollars. I come, thought it was a hundred thousand. Can, can, can come on your cheaper today. Can come on your side, but if you yeah. really want him to push for you, then it's a hundred thousand. I've heard it's a hundred thousand dollar number, but I don't think that's a good system, though. I don't either. Okay, so we're on the same page with that, but it's not the fault of, for example, if I, <clears> so so it's the fault of whoever created those laws. Not the fault of the capitalist. If you allow players wait, to wait, use steroids, wait, wait, wait. if you allow players to use steroids and it's legal, guess what? That's the law. If you don't, it's not the law. You know, the MLB is no longer testing for steroids. Well, what just happened with the Russian skater? She's not allowed to use steroids, but she did, and she's and 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 she's been forgiven for it. I I, just, I think so. I guess they're still struggling with that. So we tell me how many people are watching the Olympics today. We've been. You tell me. Are you are you watching it? I think I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> the only person I know that's watching it is my dad, and he's watching this curling. I'm like, Dad, what the hell are you watching? And they're watching this curling game, that's going on. But but the point but the point I'm trying to make to you is, it ain't the capitalist. It's the lawmaker. Well, but the capitalists own the lawmaker. No, because they are for sale. Yes. If they weren't for sale, this wouldn't be the case. But why are they for sale? Who do you blame? So do you blame, blame the prostitute or the John? The prostitute has a choice not to be a prostitute. There's well, the, a lot. the John has a choice not to be a John. No, no, but wait a minute. If the prostitute chooses not to be a prostitute, then John doesn't can, can find a prostitute. And the, and the prostitute goes broke because she's got no other job. No, she'll find a different way to make her money. That's maybe, on her. Maybe. maybe. No, no, it's not maybe. Uh, that's not how life works. No way. That's not how life works. Let me explain <laughs> to you how life works. And you know this is how life works. You tell a kid, listen, if you don't figure out a way to pay rent, you got to kind of figure out what you're going to do. If you're going to live here and rent from me, you're 22 years old, you got to kind of pay 600 bucks a month. No, you don't get a job. You're, you're, you're out of luck. You got to go live with your friends. You're a terrible dad. Fine. 
You're right. I'm a terrible dad. You're a terrible renter. You never pay rent. <laughs> what do you want me to do with you? Go figure life out. That kid leaves. He does some stuff that he wants to retaliate against that. Smokes weed, does a little coke, goes out there, ex does ecstasy, does everything he can to trash his dad. He's going to eventually get a job. And if he doesn't get a job and ruins his life, the father couldn't have done anything about that in the first place. That's on the kid. The kid has to eventually figure out a way to survive. So that prostitute will figure out a way to make money. She doesn't have to go that route. Capitalism works. It's the laws that get people to do things that hurt others because the laws allowed that to happen. So, so let's look at a little bit of American history. I, I agree that capitalism works. Sure. But at, at the end of the American Revolution, the yeah. Continental Congress uh, and the, what became the Congress were very concerned because the, the revolution was really about the East India Company. Okay. It was m more than the crown, but the crown was very dependent on the East India Company, the crown of England. And so they passed a law that said uh, no, no company, no, nobody could get a corporate license, a corporate charter, uh, unless they could prove that they're going to serve a public interest. And charters lasted for only 10 years. At the end of the 10 years, you had to go back and prove that, show, demonstrate that you had proved, uh, served a public interest, and then you could maybe get another charter. Also in there was you could, no company could buy another company or sell itself to another company. Those laws were there to protect us against corporate power because they, they, the founders were very concerned about corporate power because of the East India Company. Those laws continued for 100 years, almost about 100 years, until John D. Rockefeller came along, and he wanted to drill for oil in New Jersey. And, Delaware, and, and he says, you know, I can't, I can't drill for oil. I can't have a 10 years. It takes a lot longer to drill for oil. I've got to be able to buy out these other companies that are competing with me. It's the only way we can get oil. So he went to the, the legislature of New Jersey first and later Delaware, and he said, you know, if you change the law so that I can have uh, unlimited powers, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give a lot of campaign money. To you legislators, I'm not for them. legislators. Yeah. <laughs> and and that has continued and it's, I gro agree. it's grown and grown and grown to the Great. point where corporations and their owners have so much power over our politicians. Now we can argue all you want about who's who about the prostitute and the and the John. We can argue about but the, but who's who is who's at fault. Is it the politicians? Or is it the people that are bribing the politicians, basically, that are offering them these yeah. incredibly lucrative positions when they leave, or even while they're there, fi campaign financing, and then when they leave, if, if you don't get elected, we'll give you a great job as a lobbyist, or if you did get elected when you want to retire, you, you're going to have a great job. Who's to blame for that? Yeah, I, I, I tell you it's the law creator, the person that creates the laws. It's, it's not the person that, that, that bribes the law no, creator? No, you don't have to, you don't have to take the bribe. No, I did that, though, in other countries, and I, was, and I took the bribe myself. So yeah. I got to tell you, sometimes you don't feel like you really got a choice. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.